Hey, Patty, what are you drinking there? Coca-Cola. Like all good Americans, when I leave the country and I get done with a hard day of rocking and rolling, you know what I cool off with? Yeah, that's right. A nice cold Coca-Cola. <laughs> is that Coca-Cola fresh or is it... Uh... No, there's whiskey in there. <laughs> I'm drinking Irish Coke. Right. Well, yeah. that, is that a term? Is that the actual term for it? it I just that. coined it. If Coca-Cola steals it, I'm fucking suing your asses. <laughs> Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, let's all drink cola and get into fights. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. The American artwork you have on your on your space? Oh, <laughs> with Hulk Hogan? And, uh, I want to yeah. hear, hear about oh, that. I forgot about that. That actually got sent to us. That is beautiful. Um, I found a picture years ago that was an actual Got Milk ad that is uh, Michael Jackson dressed up as Ronald McDonald with a kid standing in front of him with the Got Milk mustache. And it just, my girlfriend and I were dumbfounded for weeks, literally, like we would just stare at it. I mean, it was all of America wrapped up in one image in all its disgusting, horrible, not glory. And uh, I put that on our MySpace, and I got a uh, MySpace message from a guy from Belgium who I wish I knew his name so I could give him credit. And he was like, uh, he's like, the image on your MySpace is the greatest thing I've ever seen since this. And he sent me that with Hulk Hogan and the, <laughs> and the World Trade Center and everything. And that became the new one. Like, it became our screensaver. It's amazing. Computer. And it'd be like, okay, I really got to go. We got to get to work. Okay, here we go. Hold on one second. You just stop and just be like, oh, shit. Look at that. That's just fucking... I have two relatives that are firemen on the East Coast, and they have T-shirts that, like... You know, and I mean, more credit to them. These are guys they knew that died in the world. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'm, I don't want to mock it. No, no. But they'll have T-shirts where I see them, and I'm like, oh, my God, where'd you get that? And then they'll be like, well, you know, I got it at the convention. And they'll be like, oh, oh cool. Well, it's the same thing. because you feel bad yeah, yeah. for a minute. You're right. like... They're not, they're not as corny as the one that's on our MySpace page. Yeah, These ones are sincere, but for a minute you're like, oh my god. I mean, there's one that you can actually buy online, but it's an eagle flying through the world trade as it topples, and in its beak is a banner, and it just says, don't tread on me. But it's the fucking world trade falling. Right. You know, it's right. like, are right, we going to celebrate how awesome we are by constantly reminding you of one of the biggest tragedies <laughs> ever but, in our country's history. So, yeah. The hardcore scene in Minneapolis, you were saying how the guys got big really quickly. Well, it was it was just, just purely... The, the straight, like the straight edge hardcore bands at that time. Yeah. You know? They were all still good dudes. We yeah. knew all of them. You know, yeah. but it was the kind of thing where it's like, at the time, scene-wise, it didn't exactly make sense. There was kind of a renaissance going on in Minneapolis at the time where almost like the dirty pop-punk bands and the crusty bands had sort of fused. And a lot of the bigger, what I would say, like metal straight edge bands... Albeit good and friends of ours, but they were like playing clubs, drawing a shit ton of people. Yeah. And the people they were drawing were very genre specific. So by default, a lot of the other genres were playing together in the basements. And then the next thing you notice in like two years, all of a sudden basement shows were like literally drawing 500 people. Right. And all of a sudden it kind of had to branch out. And by then, you, you know, every city has seen it. Montreal has had to have seen it. Where all of a sudden, Everybody that's playing in the bands or does the zines or does the radio shows or works at the record store or whatever, they all know each other. But everybody started going to the shows. Like, now it grew out in different angles. Right. So to have, like, a pop-punk band open for a harvest... I mean, Dave Walker, totally good friend of ours. But if we had opened for them at the time, shit, man, there would have been fights. Yeah, you know, absolutely. just simply there would have been fights. Like, there would have been 300 hardcore dudes there who fucking hated us. Yeah. And we would have had probably our core, like, 40 drunk punk good friends, and they would have been pissed, too, that shit was getting thrown at us. No one ever talked about it. Mm. You know, I'm not saying there was ever any discussions or anything. It just kind of ended up that way. I mean, even right now, you know, like Martyr AD. Like, That's what I was going to say, yeah. One of my best friends in the Disembody world. Disembody becomes... Disembody becomes Martyr, Martyr AD. AD. Martyr AD gets on Victory, does super well. Charlie, the guitarist from Martyr AD, is like one of my best Lives friends. Billy from He's Ford. Billy from Dillinger 4's no, roommate right around. now, you know. And like, whenever we leave town, people can't believe that. But... We actually hang out every fucking day. I mean, these aren't people we know in passing. These are like our best friends. You know? Not that big a town, really. No, I mean, when I went to see, uh, when I went to see uh, 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 the new band with Carl and um, uh, Paradise, just like two weeks ago. I mean, they were stoked to see that I came to their show. I was stoked to see them. To be honest with you, I didn't even know they were playing. I just went to pick up food <laughs> from Eric's restaurant bar, you know. And then I saw them hanging around. I was like, "What are you guys doing? We have a new band. We're playing tonight." And I was like, "Who oh, fucking went?" You know. And it's kind of like that. I mean, it's, you know, you guys got to know. You're older. You know, there's, like, guys you've known for fucking ever. Yeah. But the scene that's 
with you probably doesn't know each other. No. You know what right. I mean? Bastard Saint. Bastard yeah, Saint. That's that's Charlie. That's from Charlie's name. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Every single member of Bastard Saint is one of my best friends. Yeah. Those are all people I see every day. And then the Holy Ghost Riders, which is another band, which is Charlie's also in that, which Charlie's is also Andy. Andy. Who sang for holding on? Uh, uh, and Martyr AD at the end. Saying for holding on, Martyr AD, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. holding on. We weren't even talking about yeah. holding on yet. We oh, haven't uh, even got involved in holding on. That's right. Yeah. 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 And holding on, we did several shows with. Because by that point, everything had come back together. That's true. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like you had the mid 90s thing, and then by the time it reached around 2000, everybody was like, well, fuck this. Let's just play together. Yeah. And if people get into fights, fuck it. And then by that point, everybody was cool enough that there weren't fights. It was just a good time, mm -hmm. you know? There was a weird period where a lot of people from Minneapolis and the Twin Cities in general moved other places. Okay. You know, um, there were a lot of migrations to Boston, L.A. I mean, I think a lot of people moved around the same time. Minneapolis had a lot of people moved to Brooklyn, Chicago. You know, it happens. Well, there was also, a, you also got to understand, there was also a period there where, like, Things got so genre specific that some people branched out into completely. Like I just found out that Aaron from Disembodied had another band after Disembodied. Really? Which I didn't fucking know. Uh, I oh. had no idea. And they probably drew like 500 people. I would not have known. By the same token, Aaron also just found out that Dillinger Four was still a band, and that like we could still like sell out the Turf Club and <laughs> Triple Rock and everything. And that was news to him. Did I tell you that? I saw Aaron mm -hmm. at the at Grudge. Which Aaron? Aaron, the singer of Disembodied. Oh. And he was like, you guys are still a band, and I was like, yeah. He's like, you guys ever put out another album? And I was like, after what? And he was like, Midwestern Songs. And I was like, yeah, we put yeah. out two other ones that actually sold more than the first one. And he was like, oh, man, really? But, you know, I mean, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. You know. I'm sure every now and then Walter from Quicksand pumps into Harley from Chromags. And Harley's probably like, hey, man, you still play music? You know I mean? It's got to happen, you know? It's amazing. Was Prince ever in a, in a mosh pit? As far as I know, if Prince was never in the mosh pit, I've, it is absolutely a fact. When you shoot the like at this point now, we know tons of guys that worked at clubs in Minneapolis in the early '80s, and in that glory period. Because if you are a fan of music, and if you're not a fucking dickhole, and you're into just all sorts of music, you understand that as Prince got big, so were the replacements, so were Who's Could Do, so all at the same time, all at the same club, First mm -hmm. Avenue. Prince owned the main room, the Time owned the main room, the 7th Street Entry, which was the small club off of the main room, was replacements in Who's Could Do. You know, yeah. I'm sure Prince had to have walked over and checked out Who's Could Do. And as a matter of fact, I know people that have worked those shows that have claimed that they know that they've gone and like seen these kinds of things. Uh, the other Prince story I have that's hilarious was that in the 90s, you know the head coach with Billy Childish? Uh, British garage shit, it's huge. Like, I mean, pretty much... You wouldn't have the dirt bombs, you wouldn't have the hives, you wouldn't have any of this bullshit unless this one guy, Billy Childish, was doing bands. Yes, that's a record snob comment. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Challenge me. Um, but he had this band, the head coach in the 90s, that came and they played in uh, the 7th Street Entry. I went to the show, the opening band was a band called uh, The Makers. And I don't know if you know The Makers, but their claim, to, yeah, their claim to fame was that The Makers all wore the same garb. But one of them was definitely kind of a Middle Eastern dude who didn't look unlike Prince. They all showed up, black suits, black feather boa, right? Next thing you know, we're standing at the bar, we're all kind of talking, and there's two huge dudes in suits come through. One black guy, one white guy. Two more. And I remember looking at it and being like, what the fuck is going on here, man? I mean, I, when I say huge, I mean like this big, solid bulk, like just linebackers, right? And then the singer of the Makers comes through. And so I'm standing there, I'm looking at it, I'm like, that, that, no, dude, that's Prince. And when they have like VIPs show up, they bring them through the 7th Street entry, the smaller club. But Prince just happens to show up in a black suit and a black <laughs> feather boa. And like, granted, he had security guards all over him, but they weren't like exactly next to him, but they're walking him through, and nobody next to him even notices him. He's, He's tiny. really tiny, and he actually does have kind of like a Middle Eastern look to yeah. him, you know? And, dude, they just walked him right through, and, like, immediately all of a sudden like, walked up to everybody else, and were like, dude, was that fucking Prince? Did Prince just walk by you? They're like, no, no, man, it was one of the makers. It was like, it was one of the makers with, like, fucking, like, five <laughs> immense, like, seven-foot-tall, 400-pound, zero-body fat motherfuckers walking around him. But that was one of the greatest things ever, because it took us days to find out that it actually was him. And then, uh, and then at the end of the night, I got fucking wasted and kicked his ass.